Gavin, can you tell me about how these associate artists actually operate at the moment then with the Albany? Um, as I said, I mean, it's, it's always a learning process and, and ev everyone was kind of bespoke and we looked at each, each one as an individual thing and really the basic principles were that they gave to the Albany and we were able to give back something to them and it wasn't a great deal of uh, money or even necessarily a huge amount of resources changing hands. Um, and obviously the first set, there was, there, was, there was no real process to choose the first. They were, there were people we'd worked with over a period of time, so that they, they fitted very naturally. I mean, obviously as we're going forward, it's very important that we're kind of reflecting on how we do that. And we're very interested in actually, you know, n not evolving it over time. Um, we're also interested in looking at how it develops more to supporting um, more emerging artists, because they'd be very much kind of mid-career artists. Also then how it connects with other programs that we're doing, say young people's programs. So we're looking at how we can make all of those connections. Uh, in terms of our kind of history with each of the artists, it's been it's been very different. Uh, we've initially said each program was for a year, um, and in some cases we've just renewed that, um, and it's been going on. Uh, for instance, one of the resident companies, Upswing, um, aerial company, um, and we've been developing, and we are developing two new shows over a period of time with them. One actually. Uh, alongside Enzalecki uh, and a group of older people and older artists and also uh, another show which is in development um, which is working with young people uh, to develop the ideas around that. Uh, so I can see that in a sense going on um, over a period of time. They've also just um, curated uh, a mini circus festival that we've done so it's actually bringing circus and uh, aerial work into back into the Albany actually for the first time because the program for a few years. Um, in other times it's been very much a, a year-long program and things have, have moved on uh, and uh, the great thing is when there's been a legacy from that and I would say we almost always have a continuing relationship with the artist going forward. It's not just at the, you know, it's the end of the relationship, it just changes, changes the level of intensity, if you like. Uh, I suppose one of the good examples is someone like Polar Bear. Uh, the natural end to that came with the production of a show. But also, uh, one of the things he wanted to do was to set up a group of emerging artists, uh, a kind of spoken word collective, which of course Show Don't Tell. It's interesting, we're now actually working with them, developing work with them. Uh, in a very much a kind of associate, um, in, in, within an associate format. So it's very interesting that, that the legacy of that has been another group of artists uh, that we're working with. Um, and I think it's, it, it is difficult to find that point. Uh, and, but I think it's important that, that it is, for most artists, a kind of time-limited thing and that we're focusing on what we can both get out of that period and then you know, hopefully it becomes a continuing relationship. And it's, it's like the end of any relationship, it's not, not always easy. And do you have a formal selection process now? Um, we don't, but we haven't appointed any new associates for the last year. And we're saying very much also we don't want to impose um, too much of a formal process on it. Um, in a sense, it would always be artists that are approaching us with ideas. It would always be artists that trust the way we work so, and vice versa. So, you know, the first stage of a relationship is obviously around and then performing here or some kind of project that they've brought here already. Uh, and then, it, you know, it's a process of discussion and getting to know each other. And I think, it, you know, we only put the label associate artist on it in a sense when we've come to an agreement over a whole kind of process of, of work going forward. Uh, but as I say, we're very keen on looking at how we can widen that out, how we can invite a wider range of ideas now, as well as just those ideas that are being generated through the associate program. So we're kind of working on how we, without putting some kind of uh, full structure on that and becoming, you know, an application process, which uh, quite often just is um, self-defeating, uh, is actually looking at how, how we're bringing in wider influences and a wider range of ideas from, from different kinds of people into those programs. Are they all performing artists? Um, they are uh, currently. Um, they are um, the theatre companies, as I said, an aerial company. Um, a lot of spoken word artists, but spoken word artists that are making theatre. Um, and it tends to be artists that I would say not necessarily fitting in to any other space or format, quite often artists that are working across different art forms in different ways. Uh, interestingly, one of our um, 
one of our residents, one of our associates, um, Inua Adams, who is um, a theatre maker, a spoken word performer and poet, uh, is also very much a, a visual artist designer as well. So we're kind of looking at how we're incorporating what, what he does in terms of uh, design and visual arts within the programme as well. So I guess that's a, that's a first shift away from uh, purely performing arts based associates.